Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Luke. This is my son Ben, and today we're talking about whiskey. Not anything, but only about whiskey. Yeah, today we have a special whiskey here in our cask. It's an exclusive bottling for our company. It's a Loch Lomond whiskey, and it's a uh, first fill Amontillado, but and the strength is 54.8 and the outturn had been 843 bottles. It was distilled on December 31st, last day of the year 2008, and bottled on February the 18th, 2020. And uh, here we have a date of the 18th, February 2020. The small letters on it, yeah. So everything's fine. Amontillado, and that's a fortified wine, a strong wine, from the south of Spain and Amontillado is named after a town which lies just in between Malaga and Cadiz, just in the middle of Andalusia, which is the <clears throat> most southern part of Spain. So the relation to Sherry is there and Amontillado is a wine uh, which is between a Fino and an Oloroso Sherry cask uh, and it's not that oxidized so they produce it up to 13.5% ABV during the fermentation and afterwards they are putting a brandy in it to, to bring it up, to fortify it up to 17.5% 17, 17 to keep it more stable over a longer time. But oxidization takes place in Amontillado. So this is the first fill Amontillado, but so that means a lot of sherry influence in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So uh, today, ask me anything. I have the first question from Oli ninety six R. Hello again. Oh yeah, one of the guys who came from the German chat, and I think we skipped his message in German. So sorry for that. But we had a lot of questions <coughs> in the German chat. Uh, hello again. Can you recommend any books for whiskey education, like Michael Jackson's Malt Whiskey, for example? I haven't read many books. I, I think I've read most of your book. I'm not sure if it's translated in English. No. And I have read a lot of uh, Alfred Bernard. Yeah. But that is a, a really, really old book. <laughs> 1886, I think. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a really old book because I was, uh, I, I read everything on whiskey.de or whiskey.com, translated something into whiskey.com as well. Uh, so that's where I got my knowledge for the whiskey. So yes, you can read a book or you can read the online articles. If you like the paper, then get yourself a book. Um, Please say hello to my whiskey friends, Chris, Carl and Carl. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the Alfred Bernard was just very interesting because Alfred Bernard is, is a really interesting character. A lot of uh, stuff about the distilleries and I wanted to read up on a lot about the distilleries. So. The perfect book for that is, uh, yeah, Alfred Bernard, yeah, our website. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, should, you to, should we have a first tasting here? So this whiskey oh. wouldn't be present on the other side of the camera. So we have a, a short, a short tasting for this. So it's 54.8, so we need a little water. And as soon as you water it down, it becomes a little bit cloudy. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I topped it up, so you, you have again a lot of alcohol in it now. I have a bit more than you, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it smells with a little orange note and probably a little sweetness and honey, caramel, and a little bit of nuttiness, probably from the cask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, a lovely, uh, a lovely fresh fruity whiskey. So it's a, you have an, a really, really nice citrus aroma with oranges, with lemons, and a lot of, yeah, fresh fruitiness. And yeah, that's probably from the Amontillado. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Now I, no, I got it right. First time I had far too much mm -hmm. alcohol in it. And now I'm in the mid 40s and it's a wonderful orange juice, citrus note in it. 
wonderfully fruity and a little bit of honey, a little sugary aftertaste is really mm. sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a really sweet honey, brown sugar. Mm. Lovely. Mm. But it's strange because uh, Loch Lomond is actually not known for their um, strange casks, I would say, not known for any... They're known for their bourbon cask finishes because they want to bring out more of their distillery character. As Loch Lomond has, I think they have, what was it, 21, no, 18, 12, 16, uh, a dozen and more different styles of distilling their whiskey. So they have a lot of different distillates with uh, a lot of different yeasts and a lot of different uh, styles of distilling because they have, uh, what, what do you call it, this ring way where the water flows down, I forgot that. Mm. The Lomond still. Or it's not a lemon still, it's a... Uh, the plates <sighs> in it. No, it has has a ring for cooling, but it hasn't have a closed ring, but an, I think it has an open ring. Mm. So yeah. it's it's not officially lemon still, but it does the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and with that on or off, they have a different, uh, different type of whiskey, and that's what they want to bring out. So usually they don't do any special casks. Yeah, and uh, they have their own cooperage. So they, oh, they, do. They, they can have their reju rejuvenation of casks and uh, they have access to casks. Very good. Yeah, there had been a question up there uh, from David. No, uh, it's up on the top. Uh, when will I grow a beard? So to match your appearance. So first I had my beard first. <laughs> before even you were born. <laughs> but uh, this year... I had a beard. This year I grew a beard. So I took some videos up front, then I grew a beard. And I took some video shots. Probably I will show it uh, sometime. Um, but it's it's unusual and I, I do not like it. It's so so weird. It's <laughs> I don't like it. So I, I just made my hair completely bold. That looked better. <laughs> so, and if I grow a beard and, and I get a bold head, mm -hmm. then I look offensive. <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> so you go for what you have. Yeah. Okay. Dear host, our gentle savior and gracious host, what is your absolute must try smoky whiskey, please? Must try smoky whiskey. Lefroy. Lefroy. Lefroy as one of the most intense. Uh, smoky whiskies and if you can stand Lefroy, then you can stand any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would go for Lagavulin. It's just a, it's yeah, just it's a, also a must. An icon. And I think all those uh, s standard whiskies from Isla's South Coast uh, to make the three full, it's uh, Artback, the last one. So all the three you need to know. Is this, is this, why, I'm not getting, am I in the wrong chat? <laughs> I think I'm not live with my... Stuart Cook, Baines Whiskey from South Africa. What do you think, guys? Uh, well, I had that, uh, there is a video online from the Baines. I think I did it in English as well. And... It's a fair, good whiskey for a fresh start of a whiskey company. I had been there and uh, phoned them uh, if there is a possibility to visit the distillery. And we have been in, how was this called, Pars or Par or whatever that town was called. And uh, they said, oh, no, sorry, we're not open to the public. And a year or two later, we got a phone call. Ah, can you come and visit? <laughs> so uh, we took that video and uh, yeah, probably we once we'll go again there. Have you tried English single malt whiskey? Yes. Now that, it, that you have something, something of a resurgence. Is that the King's Barnes or is that still No, Scottish? King's Barnes is, is Kingdom of Fife, is Lowlands. It's the, the last distillery up in the north in the Lake District. 
I'm not able to remember I've that just name. had it in the news for a, yeah. a week ago or something and like that. And there is a London distillery. Mm -hmm. I tried that as well. Um, they are decent, but they are still too young. Yeah. But I think they will, will work themselves up to a really good whiskey. They just brought out a uh, whiskey liqueur. And with the whiskey liqueur, it's nice to, to hide a bit of the youth. But uh, they will become really good. Uh, <laughs> I'll check that out too. The book from Alfred Bernard I already bought some time ago. Yeah, the Alfred Bernard. I think he, he's long dead, but <laughs> long dead. But uh, it's still a really good, good book. But I think all the numbers are pretty much outdated. You can see which distillery upgrade and which distillery didn't. Uh, there was some guy, I can't find the question anymore, that was, uh, what whiskey will you try on uh, on the plane when you have the limited choice check down? Yeah, the, the, three. The, three of them. Yeah, but you noticed last time I was on the plane and uh, I went through the list and took a Glenfiddich 12, so... <laughs> so I I was on a plane <laughs> and took one. It was Glenlivet 12. <laughs> so... I think I had the choice between Glenlivet, but it was not a Glenlivet 12. Founders Reserve? Yeah, I, I think it was a nice... So you, you went for the age? I went for the... I, I didn't I haven't tried a Glenfiddich 12 for ages, so I was quite, was quite amused. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you try a whiskey on the plane, don't compare it to ground level. No, not at all. Uh, it was not as good as I was remembering it and... Probably because of the plane. Lakes Distillery is English, yes. Yes, that's the Lakes Distillery. And uh, to the whiskey, I had a whiskey tasting uh, in an Airbus 340 mm -hmm. from Lufthansa, coming from South Africa, Cape Town uh, to Munich. And uh, the captain knew me and then I sat there and then uh, the students came and said, ah, oh, well, Mr. Lüning, uh, the captain would like to talk to you. Hello, you know my name, the captain knows me. And I'm, I'm a pilot as well, did he? Because <laughs> the co-pilot <laughs> fell in agony. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, then he came and, and said, uh, well, I know you and uh, there's a, friends of mine are in the back of the plane and we did a, uh, a Harley tour uh, through the uh, West Cape region and uh, if it's possible to have a tasting with them uh, <laughs> down mm -hmm. the galley and I uh, said yes of course and he said well we have a cellar in the plane a whiskey cellar there's sometimes a bottle is, is is being left after inventory making inventory and so they had one and we tasted it and it was less intense because uh, in that high altitude you cannot keep up the high pressure of ground level as you have in Scotland uh, but you have to reduce to a level of 2500 meters 7500 feet air pressure and then the tasting buds do not work as well so you have to give all the menus a 30 percent more in, in, in salt and in spiciness and everything. And that's the same with a whiskey. You have less intensity in the whiskey. Uh, so if you're able to choose a, a cast strength up there, probably this would be a, a better choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why all the people drink tomato juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because tomato juice is really intense. And then you put some pepper and in some it. salt in it. Then you have a really intense drink, and it's just fine. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually am one of these guys as well. That give me a tomato juice. <laughs> it's just, and it's just the culture. Every time you fly, it's like, <laughs> what am I gonna have? Do you have tomato juice? <laughs> and I, I heard, that and they all have tomato juice. <laughs> yes, and, and I heard that it's the uh, maximum selling category in tomato juice. So. <laughs> <laughs> tomato juice is goes to the airport. <laughs> goes to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've now I have tried the Bloody Mary on the plane, and that was just. Oh, I, I don't like vodka. It's just too short for me. Mm. Ah, this is a question mm. from the German Oli ninety six R. Will the Ben Nevis ten be affordable again in the near future? Ben Nevis was always a problem. Ben Nevis, those people are on off people. Sometimes they have wonderful bottles, they call you and we got an exclusive cask for us. Uh, 
with a big, big age on it. So sometimes wonderful, and then you hear nothing, nothing at all for years, completely quiet. Uh, I have no idea why that happens. And then the the last bottles in the uh, at the wholesalers they rise in price in, incredibly, and we do not have the chance to 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 bunker three four pallets of that whiskey. So, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Hello from Scotland, Fraser Richardson. Hey, hi, Horst and Ben. Greetings from the Philippines. Recently got a bottle of Port Charlotte. Any tips on pairing Islas? Tips pairing Islas means to food or? Yeah, food, I think. Uh, <laughs> never mix whiskey with any food <laughs> or other drinks. Just have it neat. I would actually say, yeah, whiskey is kind of an after-dinner drink. Yeah. I would, I would mm -hmm. say it. I would pair it... I don't know, a, a really smoky whiskey with a steak. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that of an expert there, so don't take me up on that one. Martin Ricosta. Do you guys mm. drink aged rum? I tried a Zacapa 23 years, and that was very good. Attention, <laughs> Martin Ricosta. <laughs> Look extremely well at the Zacapa 23. There is no notice of years on it. In former times, they had years on it, and they had to, uh, to, to delete it from the bottle because it's not 23 years old. It's just, it was mimic. And uh, I do not like rum at all. So the question to me, uh, if I like rum or good rum, is definitely no. I have my problems with rum-finished whiskeys. <laughs> so rum is not mine. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. I do like rum. A bit sweet, that stuff. But um, you have to have a, also have a bit of a lookout there because um, they are also with the age. They have different rules for the age within the rum. It's not the youngest stuff that has the age statement on the rum. So you can actually write on a rum an age statement that is from the oldest stuff. So rum is a bit of a... Bit of a hot topic there. I'm not that much <laughs> opposed to rum as horses because they can be quite nice. But um, yeah, can you arm wrestle? Yes, I can, but I'm not really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm a climber, so I do have a bit of a bit of an arm situation going. But I'm not into the arm wrestling stuff. I'm. I'm it's just not my thing, dude. <laughs> Um, South Africa thing. Da, 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 da. Do you shop to Poland? No, we don't, unfortunately. What's your favorite bourbon? Favorite bourbon. Everybody asks me have from one. the Americans always ask me a favorite bourbon, and then I say mm, Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> favorite bourbon. Mm. Uh, but not the normal stuff. You, the, your Tennessee whiskey is far away from the normal. Yeah, far away yeah. from the normal. Um, I would say either the one of the Knob Creeks, the nine-year-old Knob Creek is really good, or uh, actually the Maker's Mark, which is really not that expensive, but I do like it. Um, I had uh, two wonderful experiences, uh, and those are the Bakers and the Bookers. I know they are from Jim Beam, from the big warehouses, but the people at Jim Beam, they really know what they're doing. And so they select the best casks from their warehouses and they know where they are maturing and produce the bakers and the bookers. Um, the bakers a little cheaper and the bookers from Bucano, uh, took the name from, he uh, built that whiskey brand. And uh, it's, I think, uncut and unfiltered. So the bookers is top stuff and it's... Now it's affordable. In former times, it was extremely expensive. Now it became affordable. So, yeah, those are the two I like most. Yeah. Do the pot stills have to be cleaned manually after each batch? Mm -mm, nope. No longer. No In longer. former times, they had to. Yeah. They, they have they, they have big spraying hoses in there, and uh, I think a big hole at the bottom, so you can flush everything out. But every distillery has their cleaning season, so at least they will be cleaned once or twice per year. 
so uh, typically once a year and just in front of that uh, season they typically are a lot of distilleries have that cleaning or maintenance period uh, over the hot summer because then water had been in the past quite scarce so they did not have enough water to cool the coolers so they took the time for uh, refurbishing everything and uh, before that time they typically have a few weeks where a lot of distillers produce smoky whiskey as well there had been a question or a statement that smoky is just a marketing blur uh, and that most distillery now do it because the market asks for it uh, and yes and not to spoil their typical brands, then they do it just before the refurbishment and then they can empty all intermediate receivers, everything, so that they do not recycle any smoky uh, whiskey from pipes or, or raw whiskey from pipes into the finished product of a new batch. Mm -hmm. So there they have the three or four weeks production of peated whiskey just in front of the cleaning. Mm -hmm. mm. I think we have a bit of a troll in the in the chat. Ziggy Jackson <laughs> will not answer your question, but it's a nice troll. It's not one of these <laughs> bad trolls, but the story is just, no, I don't believe your story. <laughs> and why would you ask me that? Let's ask me anything about whiskey. <laughs> Hi, Horst and Ben. What do you think about Jack Daniels Lynchburg Lemonade? Have I tried that? I had that at Mary's Bobo, Bobo Mary's. How was it called? This guest house? Miss Mary Bobo's guest house. house yes. <laughs> so we, we got an appointment in the what, late 90s and uh, there we got the lemonade, but oh. without whiskey. Oh, without whiskey. It okay. was dry as <laughs> every establishment in the the county was dry it's a dry county it wasn't allowed to to pour whiskey even today so you have to cross the county border and get your whiskey and if you have it in in the front of your car the sheriff might be angry. oh yeah in your passenger cab i think that's yeah. in all the us yeah it pretty all... much i find it really disturbing <laughs> in america <laughs> you have to put it in the front yeah i have to really be careful when i drive in america like what do you have back there yeah, that's a case of whiskey. Okay, sir, please get out of the car. <laughs> Why? <laughs> In Germany, the, the policeman would go like, do you have that tightly secured? Yes. Okay, drive on. <laughs> he, would, he would care about that tightly secured and not about you opening it. I don't know. <laughs> Horst used to make, so, Rope Lütjörn. Horst used to make what's in my personal bar videos in the past. Can you start making them again? It would be cool if both of you could share the content of personal bars in separate videos. Yes, I will do, but unfortunately, my bar is far smaller than everybody suggests because I have those, the, the years before you came, I had a 250 whiskeys to taste over the year. Mm. So my bar was non-existent you, you can't taste all that whiskey and then have two drams in the evening you're you're killing yourself it's impossible so uh today i have two three bottles in my bar and i typically uh, pour them out to friends if they're coming they're asking for it of course so you said oh no i do not have whiskey in my bar then <laughs> so I have to have some and not the worst ones. So I have some and I will pre present them soon. The mm -hmm. problem with my bar video would be... It's too like, big. <laughs> where do I start? I have to, I don't know, elongate the, the view a bit and go like, okay, I like that one. That one I kept because of that. And that one I kept because of that. <laughs> That's like my bar. And you have in the back of the, the mixing video is a bit of a rest. And I have two or three bottles also there. And a few other, few other bottles that need to be cleaned mm -hmm. out someday. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I will do a bit of these style of videos. Like I have... Uh, a video coming up that goes my personal development of taste or something like that and I will have my uh, favorite whiskies and my favorite whiskies below uh, 80 euros and I might have touched nope 
I might have touched the off button. <laughs> <laughs> that would have Don't been bad. Don't do it. The end stream button should not be in my reach. <laughs> yeah. Puffs and drums. Do you have an opinion of on Deanston Virgin Oak? Yes, a wonderful piece of work. Yeah. Deanston Virgin Oak. Yes, Deanston Virgin Oak was good. There was one Virgin Oak that I really didn't like. So, Snow328. Uh, you're shouting in this channel. <laughs> I will not answer that. Every... Do you have, <laughs> do you have it's just small, gaps. small letters? <laughs> you have a defect, is it a shift <laughs> button on your keyboard. <laughs> it's too too difficult to read. I'm not noticing a substantial rise in cost of whiskey in Scotland. You notice it in Germany. A little bit. The taxes in the UK are two and a half to three times higher than, than here. So the cheaper whiskies or the entry level whiskies are much more expensive. If you're reaching higher prices than the, uh, the supply and demand takes over and the supply in the UK is bigger than uh, here on the continent. So the cheaper whiskies are much more expensive and the expensive whiskies are nearly the same. Mm -hmm. What makes whiskey smooth, low or no burn? Is it cask influence or aging? Um, what what makes a, a whiskey not smooth is or sharp, which is the other side, is uh, first of all, it's the alcohol. So if you have a really high strength whiskey, it will be sharper. Then the alcohols with the... There are different alcohols that have different kind of roundness to it and different stuff in there. And so you can either have them matured for a long time, that's uh, reductive aging, and that brings out a bit the sharp uh, tones from the whiskey, or you can have that charred through a char, uh, you can filter it through a charcoal layer as the Tennessee whiskey does. Uh, if you've ever tried a white whiskey from, let's say, George Dickel or Jack Daniels, but they don't do much white whiskey, and uh, then another distillery, then you will re realize, okay, that, that Tennessee whiskey stuff is much, much smoother. And you can also have that effect with a charred whiskey barrel. So it's heavily, and that takes out the, the, uh, the sharp substances. So it's both. It's the H and the cask influence, depending on the cask, of course. So, Snow328, thank you for writing small caps uh, or small <laughs> letters. Uh, have either of you tried Kauitsawa? Always have been curious if worth the price. I Last, uh, there had been a Kauitsawa collector here and he has bottles for 50,000, 100,000 uh, single bottles and he has a collection of more than a hundred, the biggest in the world. And uh, it's a, therefore it's very, very expensive. I never tried it, but I believe that it's more than twice or three times as good as others. <laughs> and having then the thousand fold price, it's not okay. So mm. it's a collector's item. And uh, there had been a lot of different cast maturations. And uh, so therefore the price had been that high. Yeah. In the Targ, was it Europe? Thank you. <laughs> uh, do you ever ask for fun club? Not for fun, but uh, we kind of do. Mm, we do. We did the, <laughs> the, 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 what was it, probes? The, uh, well, so the samples from This the is an exclusive bottle, and we got samples from different casks, and then we have to decide which casks we take. So uh, we're doing samplings and uh, give our ratings to the cast and we do not show each other uh, which ratings we have and then we compare and typically we build an average very close to each other so just half a point it's 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 zero to five and we give half points as well <laughs> and most of the time it's only half a point difference depending on the maturation i had the room finished and i was like yeah. oh that's 4.5 he was like that's 2.5 <laughs> so, so yeah <laughs> usually with with the which we're about 
what, 0.5 or yeah. at maximum the worst one. maximum one yeah. but <laughs> with the rum finish there was a bit of a gap <laughs> okay uh, will the Ben Nevis 10 be affordable again in the near future that's the question I had oh you already had that yeah oh sorry sorry um, I'm a bit behind here yeah, we, we, we can't no we had that in the German take and oh, this the is a carry over oh it's uh, a carry over uh, so uh, this with whiskey, I think uh, it depends if the supplies start again, and I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it's a supply demand pro problem. I've, I'm not quite sure about the whole situation by Ben Nevis, but weren't they a bit uh, under the influence? Um, not in the influence. Uh, didn't they have a bit of a problem with financial problems and production back in the days? And were they F closed? Financial something problems? Like? No, they have a. Uh, a Japanese uh, mother company, and I think they give uh, the possibility to sell whiskey outside the, uh, the typical supply for the blends. And if there is supply, then they give it out, otherwise, not. Yeah, is there a bubble in the whiskey world, especially collectible whiskey? That is really a good question. I digged a little uh -huh. bit into history and. Uh, there are bubbles, spirit bubbles in the world. You can see in the moment it's gin. It has been tequila, therefore it was mezcal, and, 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 and vodka had been a bubble. And as soon as the big corporations stopped their marketing for that, sales are dropping a lot. And there's only a single spirit in the world which grows and grows and grows and just had very short periods where it was stable or lost a little bit uh, in sales and that's whiskey. And the question is why? And I found out that it's depending on the old empire, the British empire, and they had that a big influence all over the world. And the, the English, they were... Uh, the people sitting at the desk, collecting money, counting, giving regulations. And the Scottish people, they run the business out there. So they had the armies out there in India, in, in Malaysia, everywhere. And uh, so the Scottish people were, soldiers were out there with families later on. And they want to have their whiskey out there. So they produced whiskey all over the world. And so those former colonies like the US, like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, India, uh, they produced the whiskey. The biggest whiskey producer in the world is Scotland, the second is India, the third one is US and then Canada. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, whiskey making going on due to the old empire and this is a far more stable trend uh, than any other spirits. There's this uh, Yinro, Yinro coming from uh, from Asia and they are the biggest spirits brands in the world but I'm not quite sure if this will really take over there's a chance that it takes over uh, but I'm not quite sure there's a fly in here a big mm. one isn't it sitting on the lens no Alex already said that <laughs> <laughs> and yes I think the the lighting is a bit stronger. I will do my Obama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the lighting is a bit stronger than the the AC, so it woke up again. Usually, when you when you're a bit colder in the room, then it sits down, but now it just got up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good question. Uh, which Glen Murray whiskey is worth recommending, in your opinion? I just had a really good fifteen year old. Mm -hmm. The 15 year old was really good. Glenmore had been a, a company which was in the arrangement of Glenmore G P L C together with Artback. And uh, then uh, they sold Glenmore off to a French company, and the French company has a wonderful supply of fresh wine casks. So Glenmore was famous in the old days for the first Chardonnay finish. And uh, now uh, they're coming with more of those finishings and it's, it's wonderful work what they are doing there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In which distilleries did you have the best 
customer experience, special tours, for example. Yeah, there had been a question uh, who wants to, to go to Scotland, which one to, to visit. Mm -hmm. So um, special tours, if you have want to have a special tour, you will have the best at, uh, I would say, Glen Farkless is really good because there are many, many tours. You can go up to tours that I think cost 100 pounds or even mm -hmm. more. Uh, because but you're getting some spirits for you're it. getting a lot of that from that so you're getting a, a tour like in your private group only the people you come with and I think it's called the decades tour or something like that and then you get a 30 40 50 year old Glenn Farkless or something like that mm -hmm. now, so Glenn Farkless was really good and you get to see a lot there's uh, hands-on really really there what in terms of uh, what uh, what was really beautiful as well was uh, uh, Glenmorangie. It's a bit far out. It's a bit far away, but uh, the cool thing about Glenmorangie is you get a bit of a you get a little drum of their uh, mash and a bit a little bit of drum of their a wee drum of uh, fermented what's the the wash, the beer. So you you get really hands on experience there, and it's just really 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 beautiful at Glenmorangie. Um, Not quite sure what you get for tasting. Uh, what also is a very good tour is uh, Glenfiddich. Uh, typically, the people say, oh, Glenfiddich is a mass production, most sold single malt whiskey in the world. Um, but uh, they have, in, over the summertime, they have tour guides which talk in your language, in a lot of languages, so you can uh, go for a tour in your language. This is one very good thing. The second is uh, that they have a very, very impressive still house with a lot of smaller stills. Mm -hmm. And those stills still have rummager and so it's old. And they have uh, different types of mesh tons, a very old one, an open one, still open with the cast iron from the Victorian ages. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they have uh, their own filling line. This is very, very special, yeah. which you won't see anywhere else. And when I was there, it was affordable in price. So prices went up a lot for the visiting because people knew now know uh, that people are willing to pay for the tour yeah yeah what also what what was really good as well if you if you want to fly very far or you come from a different region on this planet is uh, yuichi or Hokkaido, which is japanese very very far out so it's really really far away but uh they have a guy that's shoveling coal under the under the the still so that was really cool and they have like a campus and the old house of uh uh, Yamasaka Takatsuro and there is a museum and there's everything there and you can see everything it's really really beautiful Yuichi is really really good and also what is really good is um, uh, Jim Beam and Buffalo Trace they're also really really hands-on if you live in within the United States and you can drive to Kentucky yeah that was really good as well mm -hmm. uh, how many whiskeys do you uh, GRJ Hello, how many whiskey do you try per month? So in former times when Ben wasn't helping, I had around 250 a year. Um, so this was two and a half liters of whiskey a year. So there wasn't much space left on my liver for the rest <laughs> there. Um, so today I'm tasting, say, less than half of that. Yeah, probably, because the amount I'm tasting in front of the camera uh, had gone down, so it's only half a centiliter, uh, and uh, so I think today I'm around a hundred a year, not mu not more, no. Mm -hmm. um, and best budget whiskey, best budget whiskey. I have to say, uh, I really do like the Maker's Mark Red Label. That is really good as well. Um, best budget whiskey. Depends on what you define by budget. What your budget is. <laughs> <laughs> I think this, what we had last time, the, the Ardmore, was it traditional or was it legacy? 
The mm -hmm. Artmore were really good for their price. Tom and Tao for the price as well. Mm -hmm. So you, you, with the budget whiskies, you can't go for the big names. They know what, what the name is worth. Yeah, yeah. So you have to go for the uh, second tier of distilleries. Although the, the Glen Morangy 10 is also not that expensive. No, and it's I think it's under 30, cast, but yeah. it depends on where your budget is. Yeah, if you have under 20, I think, or in Germany, the, uh, what do you call it, the Maker's Mark is around 20, 25, something like that. <laughs> this is twice the price from the US. <laughs> is it? Okay. Okay. Ah, no. me, Hete Boss. Hi, Jameson Limited Reserve, 18 year old, out of stock everywhere. Any chance of coming back? Well, I visited Jameson and had a look at the warehouses. It's extremely big, mm -hmm. those warehouses. They're building warehouses every quarter. They build a new warehouse and piling up whiskey and they're selling worldwide that extremely uh, that there is no need for an 18 year old to keep up the cash flow. Mm -hmm. So this is unbelievable Irish whiskey is is booming extremely and therefore they are selling the whiskey faster and letting not maturing it I, I, I think it's a shame because those 18 year old Irish whiskey they were wonderful mm -hmm. uh, but there is at Bushmills there are still 21 year old whiskies out there not too ex very expensive but not too expensive uh, so uh, if you're going for old whiskey in Ireland or Irish, old Irish whiskey, then from my point of view, uh, the Jameson as well as the Cooley distillery is the, the point we have to go to. Is it possible to reorder the club bottle? Depends on which club bottle. <laughs> I think the, from last year, do we still have some from the last year? Uh, so we try Not to have sure. bottles, we have m more bottles than we're selling yep. over here. Um, we're over buying them. But uh, from time to time, if it's very good, then people immediately buy a second one. Uh, so then it will be, sometimes we're short in the summer so that we have to introduce the new bottle a little bit early. Mm -hmm. What do you think about McMurrah Intelligence? It's the first whiskey uh, with <laughs> artificial intelligence as a blender. I did love it. I think it was really good. But um, I'm not quite sure if it was just artificial intelligence. I think they had a bit of a flavor profile and the master distiller also worked with that as well. So, yeah. Are there Dalmore bottlings from independent bottlers? Tom is just Friedrichsen. It's Hein. Friedrichsen. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. There are distilleries out there which prohibit uh, selling whiskies independently. And if somebody gets a cast and tries it, he faces uh, <laughs> himself <laughs> at law very soon. Uh, so Dalmore is a company not selling whiskey to independent bottlers. Mm -hmm. Hello, Ben. Will you and Horst make a cocktail video together? Would be awesome. <laughs> I'm not sure if I get him to do that. <laughs> I'm a person tasting things neat. <laughs> and a cocktail is a 100% mix. <laughs> That's a cocktail. That's it. Mix. That's a definition of a cocktail. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, to the, to the... But, but, sorry. But I will taste your ingredients. Okay. Neat. Angostura. Neat. Okay. <laughs> we, we can do that. I, ha I have it over there. <laughs> I can arrange that. To the, to the guy with the Krawi Sawa um, <laughs> question. I've actually been to the place where the Krawi Sawa distillery was. And <laughs> I think that guy in the backyard knew exactly. Oh, another crazy European trying <laughs> to find the distillery. I build a house on it. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just a... a a lovely backyard lawn <laughs> where you can drive to it, look to that guy and it's like, not again. <laughs> did you take a photo? I think I did. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to publish it because it's it's just a backyard. 
Ja, ja. Oh, das ist, ja. Uh, ben, it's your kitchen where you make the cocktail with. Yes, that's your kitchen. Yes, no, no comments about her. I think I'm cleaning it every time before that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my kitchen is not that dirty. Make Feuerzangenbowle. <laughs> Should we and do that? Tuna. Yeah. Well, when do you make Feuerzangenbowle for Christmas, isn't it? Uh, no, new, uh, new Year. New Year, New mm-hmm. Year. Maybe we can do that for New Year. Can, can we do that with whiskey? I think I've done that with what's that? You need it. You need high strength, otherwise it won't burn. Uh, how the how was a? But you will get that, a headache. That, that pochine stuff. I think we had that pochine stuff, and it I was think just just not now good. the video is evolving. Yeah, <laughs> it's evolving. Yeah, it's 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 really. I think we made it, and it was really horrible because it was like. This is strong and also really, really sweet. Yeah. And isn't it supposed to caramelize or something like that? Yeah, the the you have a sugar cone for yeah. everybody who doesn't mm. know which. But there's a what, film about Feuerzangenbowle. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it's from the 30s, I think. Yep. It's an old one, black and white, and uh, you have a special piece of metal, a metal sheet with a cut in the middle, which you put on a big. A bowl uh, with wine in it. Then you put that sugar cone, real sugar cone, on it. Then you suck it full, pour it uh, with high strength alcohol, and then you light it up. And then the sugar cone burns, and the burning liquid sugar uh, drops into the wine, and everything is, is smells from alcohol everywhere. And <laughs> <laughs> it's this has yes, yes. And then you get you, you pour your drink and then you have a headache next time. <laughs> But we had it twice when I was young. I thought you had to have these special t- pliers or something like that. No. Do you have to put it on? Okay. Yeah, so we had we had a, a a metal sheet cut in the middle so that the sugar could drop down. It was that long uh, with a fold on the sides, and you put it on the on the top of the. In English, fire, pongs, pond, fire, tongue. Yes, tongue. You have to have the thongs. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure how if you did it right, <laughs> but we, we will try to do that. So, uh, if we remember. Yeah. Hello, gentlemen. What is your view of the Eiffel Distillery here in Germany? I haven't heard that yet. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so there are uh, 120 whiskey distilleries now here in Germany, and only very few make it to to bigger amounts of whiskey. What's your favorite American bourbon? American uh, bourbon, uh, favorite American bourbon, uh, Knob Creek or Maker's Mark Red Seal? Yeah, and I have the they're quite different. Or Elijah Craig 18. Yeah, that has been a very good one. Yeah. And I have the bookers and the bakers. Depends on, on your on your pocket. If you if you can't <laughs> afford that much, go for the make spark, then more Knob Creek, and then if you have really much, much more eighteen year old Elijah Craig. But it's hard to find these days. What is your favorite Campbelltown whiskey? Definitely <laughs> Springbank. Which one did we have? Fifteen. Twenty one years. Fifteen and eighteen we had. Eighteen. 18 years, yeah, definitely. Greg's whiskey guide. Oh, come on, guys. What does he mean? Greg? Another one? No. Hennessy. I think he's a cognac guy. <laughs> Why you don't typically drink bourbon, as I've seen you much more accustomed to Scotch and Irish whiskey. And uh, no. Um, there are two things. First, uh, Here in Central Europe, uh, bourbon isn't that popular. Bourbon is uh, is only sold very cheap. There is a very small amount of bourbons on the market, specialized whiskey dealer, mail order store, uh, and we have probably, uh, rough guess, 5% of bourbon overall. But Irish whiskey, I also do not taste very often because Irish is 5% as well. So Irish and bourbon whiskey is not that popular. Uh, the Scotch whiskey is here. 
So this is the big amount. And the American whiskey does not make it always over here to Europe because they think in containers. And here they thinking in, in cases or even single bottles, which they are able to sell. And in the US, you have those big outlets and the liquor stores and there you're putting out whiskey like hell and here there's no demand for it so we taste it according to the demand we have mm -hmm. so there was a question what kind of Loch Lomond is on your cask it's an actually a whiskey.de exclusive um, when we uh, took the bottle for the live stream uh, there was a bit of a thinking about selling and that's why we took the whiskey.de exclusive it's a very very good one but mm -hmm. unfortunately you can only get it in germany and austria and uh, <laughs> in the beginning of the live stream i think he might have joined the live stream later uh, i talked about the amontillado first fill uh, fortified wine cask jesse Regenauer. okay well oh, is better wheated bourbon John Belushi, mm -hmm. Weller. Uh, the Weller I had some time. It's not that easy uh, to get big amounts of that. No. Ha <laughs> ha. Mm -hmm. Any chance of reviewing Terempeli, 10 years old single malt from Finland? I had, I think, two Terempeli whiskies tasted over the last years. You might have a look here on the channel on whiskey.com. Uh, I had some. I don't think it was the 10 year old. It was, I think, an unaged and a smoky and a, a sherry cast, I think I had. They were definitely good made. Yeah. Yeah. So we've already done 52 minutes now. Yeah. So um, it's getting a bit late for me. It's a long day for me. <laughs> so uh, um, do you have anything else to say? Uh, you want to yeah, have any there's the next one coming up. The in next a month, one? In a month or so. I don't think we have that down yet. Okay. So, uh, but uh, there will be one and then we have a little break uh, because it's just getting summer. Everybody wants to go out and have a barbecue and yeah, our numbers are dropping a bit during the summer times because it's kind of light outside. You can still sit outside and not uh, cozy up with a glass of whiskey and watch a whiskey live stream. So, but we will do a bit of a more more stuff when the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer and it's getting colder and uh, that's when we're gonna start live streaming with much more again but i think we'll have one more live stream so if you want to keep posted then have a look at whiskey.com slash live you will find everything about the live streams there and if you'd like to be very nice to us then give us a thumbs up so um i think i'll close the stream then yeah. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching for all the questions. See you next time.